I just take our disclaimer. <clears throat> None of the music that you hear is ours. We just pray that you all enjoy it. Amen. Amen. Welcome to God's Children's Bible Fellowship. We are a loving church on the go in Jesus' name. How blessed we all are here this Sunday to be in the house of the Lord. I'd like to invite you to come in and join us in our worship service. We always begin our worship with a moment of silence, a time to reflect, to prepare our hearts for worship, to think of loved ones that's gone on before us. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent, keep silent before him. Recite the Lord's Prayer with me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Psalm this morning will come from the 27th number of Psalm. Mm -hmm. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Yes. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I dread? Yes, God. When the evildoers came against me to devour my flesh, my foes and my enemies stumbled and fell. Mm -hmm. The army deploys against me. My heart will not be afraid. Though a war breaks out against me, I will still be confident. Yeah. I have asked one thing from the Lord. It is what I desire to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Mm -hmm. Gazing on the beauty of the Lord. Yes. And seeking him in his temple, for he will conceal me in his shelter. In the day of adversity, he will hide me yes. under the cover of his tent. Yes, Lord. He will set me high on a rock. Then my head will be high above my enemies around me. I will offer sacrifice to his tent with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music unto the Lord. Amen. Let's have a good time in the Lord yeah. this day. Amen.
grace. God is good. And greatly to be praised. Amen. Yes, he is a wonder. He is awesome. He is marvelous. He is mighty. He is Lord of Lord, King of Kings. The best thing that ever happened to us. Amen. And so just briefly before we get into prayer, I just want to remind you that we are here for you. And we have posted our various ways of communication, so please feel free to contact us at any given time. Because we are praying for you. Amen? Amen. Prayer. Communication with the Lord God, our Savior. Mighty is He, our Lord. And so we pray and we thank God because He is our Redeemer. Yes, we pray and as we give ourselves away to him, surrendering all to the Lord, we do that because we owe all to him. Yeah. At the name of Jesus, we must all bow. We must all confess that he is Lord. Amen. Amen. We pray asking God to reign and to rule over our lives. To take control. To be our leader. To be our guidance. To show us where to go, when to go, how to go. Who to be in contact with. And what he would have us to say in that special way that only he can give. So it's crucial for us to be in a space where we can hear from God, where we take that time each and every day to be in that secret closet, whatever that looks like for you, to pray and commune with God. We pray being thankful because He is our refuge. God is our friend. He is our Friend above all friends. He is our mother when we are motherless. God is our father when we are fatherless. God is just God all by himself. And so we're just thankful and prayerful to him always. We praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. From all creatures here below. Praise God above all heavenly hosts. Praising Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Good morning and welcome again to God's Children Bible Fellowship Church. Amen. Amen. We uh, thank you this morning for oh God for allowing us to see this new day. We thank you for the events that occurred not just this week, Lord, but for the last four years, Lord. We thank you for the test you put us through. <laughs> 
really appreciated God and bringing us out of it, Lord, with blind colors. Now, our, um, our scripture this morning will be coming from 1 Corinthians chapter 7, mm -hmm. beginning at the 20th verse yeah. to the 24th. Mm -hmm. And God's mighty word reads, Each word one should remain in the situation which he was when God called him. Were you a slave? When you were called, don't let that trouble you. Although, if you can gain your freedom, do so. For he who was a slave when he was called by the Lord is the Lord's free man. <clears throat> Seemingly, who was a free man when he was called is Christ's slave. You were bought at a price. Mm -hmm. Did not become slaves of men. Well, Brothers, each man, as responsible to God, should remain in the situation God called to him. Mm -hmm. Thus is the reading of God's word. God's word is already blessed. God bless the reader doers in his word of his word. This morning we will have it. Thank you. 
Yeah. Nowhere is that wickedness more prevalent than it is in today's system of politics. All right, all right, speaks. And that evil and wickedness, especially during this last week, during the presidential election, has brought about a great deal of stress and anxiety, yes. grief and nervousness amongst the citizens of this country. Yeah. And these are just some of the adverse circumstances resulting from a morally corrupt system. Yeah. So from this podium, we talk about the answer yeah. to all these problems. All right, all right. We're here to tell you there's no one else to turn to That's right. but Jesus. Amen? Amen. He's the only answer to this terrible situation yeah. that we've gotten ourselves into. The only recourse we have yeah. is to turn to the word of God. Amen. 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 I know we, we try to exercise our rights and vote and have our voices heard. Mm -hmm. And that's all well and good. But it don't matter who you voted for. Mm -hmm. Come on. It don't matter if you're an elephant or a donkey. Well. It don't matter what side of the political fence you sit on. Uh -huh. well. It is God's will. Yeah. That will be done. Amen. Amen. Yeah, yeah. I am glad though Come on. that the current president has been voted out of office. Amen. I'm glad too. It didn't matter to me who was running against him. Yeah. I would have voted for SpongeBob over him. <laughs> Get that demon out of office. Amen. And for many of us, our vote was based on the age-old battle between good and evil. Amen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, don't get it twisted. Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, they're not the saviors of America. Amen? Right, yeah. They might sit in high offices, right. but I know somebody mm -hmm. who sits in the highest office. Amen? Because he is the most high. Amen? I don't trust a Republican or a Democrat a libertarian or a, a independent mm -hmm. Green Party or any other political affiliation. Yeah. In Psalms 118.8, the Bible says, it's better to take refuge in the Lord yeah. than in man. Amen. Right. Amen. So as we continue this month with our series on citizenship, it's worth noting that many of us migrated here from other places. Yeah. If I could take a little survey, Pastor and Minister Tasha, they from the LA area. And my wife, Sister Candy, is from Cleveland. And uh, Sister Yvonne was from Arizona somewhere. And Brother Deacon from Baltimore, and so on and so forth. But we all migrated here from other places. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we are now citizens of Las Vegas. Yes. Yeah, okay, okay. They call Las Vegas Sin City. Mm. But let me tell you something. I'm blessed to be here. Amen? Amen. Amen. Our citizenship is trifold. Meaning well, that we're citizens of three places. Come on, come on. We're citizens of the city of Las Vegas. Yeah. We're citizens of the state of Nevada, yeah. and we're citizens of the United States of America. Yeah. And for many of us throughout our family line, our ancestors and, and our forefathers, they migrated from one place or another all over this country. When you look back at your family lineage, you find that you got people from Mississippi and Alabama and Louisiana. Y'all got some folk from down there, don't you? Yeah. Amen. But if your family line are from the branches of the tree of the indigenous people, mm. the Native Americans, yeah. it is common knowledge that the nations of Native Americans were America's first citizens. Amen. Amen. And you know how we as color folk, we like to always think we got some Indian in us, don't we? I got, I got Cherokee in my family, look at my hair. I got long hair, I got Apache in my family. But we all thought that we was from the, the Apaches or the Cherokee or the 
Kiowa, the Seminole, the Iroquois, the Blackfoot, and so on and so on. But they were the first citizens of this country. Yeah, yeah. Many people came to America voluntarily. Mm -hmm. They came here because they believe there's a place called America, mm -hmm. home of the brave, yeah, yeah. land of the free. <laughs> they heard it's the land of opportunity, yeah. land of milk and honey. Yeah. Well, it's a place that has freedom. Since this land, America, was founded, there's been people from all over the world that immigrants trying to come to America. Some of our ancestors came here involuntarily, amen? Yeah. They weren't called immigrants. They were called slaves. Yes. And today is no different. People still trying to get to this place we call America. And people will do almost anything to get here. All right, all right. You remember back in the late 70s and the early 80s, the Cuban refugees? Yeah. They would pack these little fishing boats over capacity. Hundreds drowned trying to cross over the southern Atlantic to get to America. People hike through mountains, scale 15 feet walls, Climb fences, dig tunnels, stow away on airplanes, yeah. all to get to this place called America. People will do and have all have done almost anything, even to the point of dying, mm -hmm. to get into this country, to have an opportunity at a better life. And people will leave communist societies to come to America for freedom. Yeah. If you remember about a year or so ago, there were migrants coming all the way from Central and South America, mm -hmm. trying to come to America. Mm -hmm. All of them looking for a better life for them and for their families. Many of them walking mm -hmm. thousands of miles from places like Guatemala, yeah. and Honduras mm -hmm. trying to escape their homeland because they lived in places that had been ravaged by drug cartels and, and crime and warlords and places that had no economic growth where people were poor and disenfranchised without some of the basic necessities of life. Yes, well, well. Food and water. Mm -hmm. But they came here to America looking for and hoping for the American dream. Yeah, yeah. But what many of them experienced was an American nightmare. Mm -hmm. Families were separated, children torn from their parents and locked in fence cages like animals. Yeah. Women were given forced surgical sterilizations and so many other cruelties and inhumanities was heaped on these people. Tens of thousands of people from around the world every year are trying to get to this place yeah, yeah, called yeah. America. Yeah. All with the purpose and the intent to become American citizens. Mm -hmm. Well, many who come to America seek freedom. Yeah. And those who of us are born American citizens, we believe that we have an inalienable right to be free as citizens of this place called America. Mm -hmm. yes. In America, on, you on. have the right to be free. Uh -huh. This place we call America is a melting pot yes. of peoples from all other countries all over the world that make up the citizenry of this country. Mm -hmm. People have, since the beginning of this nation, migrated here from every corner of the world seeking citizenship in this country, all in the name of freedom. Yeah, yeah. So I want to stay with that theme of freedom. Uh -huh. freedom. Uh -huh. freedom as a citizen in a place called heaven. Amen. I, I, I looked up the word freedom. Mm -hmm. Dictionary.com gives a, several definitions of the word freedom. The simplest definition is the quality 
or state of being free. Some other definition says that freedom is the quality of or state of being exempt or released from something, burdensome or onerous. Even yet, another definition of freedom is the state of not being imprisoned or enslaved. Yeah. Truth is, brothers and sisters, slavery has been an institution cemented its place almost since the beginning of civilization. Yes. Mm -hmm. The Bible contains several references to slavery, which was a common practice in antiquity, in the days of old. You remember what it was like, Deacon? <laughs> Many of the patriarchs mentioned in the Bible were in the upper echelon of society. Yeah, yeah. They were owners of slaves. Right. You all heard the old saying. Well, I was sweating like a Hebrew slave. <laughs> the Hebrews were in slavery for 430 years in Egypt, amen? amen? But the institution of slavery was and still is mm -hmm. a money-making proposition. That's right. Many think that slavery ended 160 years ago when the 13th Amendment abolished slavery in this country. But people have fought and died all in the name of freedom. Mm -hmm. But truth is, slavery still exists yeah. in many parts of the world. Mm -hmm. And let's explore this word called freedom. Freedom. Freedom is a strange dichotomy, mm -hmm. meaning it's two opposite things mm -hmm. in one. Yes. It's actually an odd oxymoron. You see, in order to be free, you must first be a slave. Uh, and you might ask me, well, Pastor Tim, how can one be a slave and be free? Let us go to our scripture. Change. Forgive me for my long-windedness. In 1 Corinthians 7, 20 through 24, let each one remain in the same calling in which he was called. Yeah. Were you called while a slave? Do not be concerned about it. But if you can be made free, rather use it. For he who is called in the Lord while a slave is the Lord's freed man. All right. All right. I gotta read it again. For he who is called in the Lord while a slave is the Lord's freed man. Right. Likewise, right. he who is called while free is Christ's slave. Yes. You were bought at a price. Yes, yes. Do not become slaves of men, right. Right. but let each one remain with God yes. in that state which he was called. Yes. That is profound. Mm -hmm. Truth is, there is no freedom. Mm -hmm. There is no freedom. Where there is law. And of course, without law, there would be total anarchy in our society, total chaos. And with the law, there will always be lawbreakers. Correct, correct. God's law was given so that people could see how sinful they were. Yeah. The law by itself was powerless to bring about righteousness in man. God gave Moses over 600 ceremonial, domestic, and civil laws. But just like us, the Israelites, they were slaves to the law. Just like the Israelites couldn't keep the law, just like today. We cannot abide by the law. We can't keep the law. So God sent his son to fulfill the law. Acts 13, the Bible tells us, through him, everyone is set free. Mm -hmm. Every sin of justification, not able to obtain under the law of Moses. Mm -hmm. So Jesus set us free yeah. from the curse of the law yeah. by being and giving us grace. Amen? Yeah. And through his sacrifice, he absolved us from the law. And it's only through him that we have true freedom. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, that's right. The Bible tells us in John 8 36. So if the Son sets you free, then you be free. You will be free indeed. Amen. Yes, Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. Freedom mm -hmm. is a great American lie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Freedom is the great American illusion. Right. Freedom is one of the enemy's greatest lies and deceptions. Mm -hmm. If you think you're free, try to get up and lead this country without a passport or a visa. Uh, right. Try to get on a plane without an ID. Right. Mm -hmm. You think you're free, go eight months without paying your cable bill mm -hmm. or your light bill. We are all slaves to something in this world, amen? amen. The point being, you can only be free unless you're a slave of Jesus. Amen. All right. In order to achieve true freedom, you must be bound to Christ. Amen. Amen. As a slave, because only Jesus can set us free. The truth is, Jesus is the truth. Amen. And the truth yeah. shall set you free. Amen. Yeah. You'll never have freedom unless you know the truth. Yeah. Fortunately, many of us are still enslaved. We are in the bondage of our minds. We are slaves to the things of this world. As smart as we think we are, we not so much. We got smart phones and smart watches and smart TVs and smart cars and we even got smart water. And all this smart stuff only makes us dumb. <laughs> remember back when you can remember about 10 or 12 phone numbers? Yeah. How many phone numbers can you remember now? Amen. <laughs> and half of this stuff, we can't even figure out. Right. We only use 25% of the functionality of the devices that we use on a day-to-day -day basis. Amen. Modern science says we only use 25% of our total brain capacity. Mm -hmm. So two-thirds of everything we can't even understand. Mm -hmm. Brothers and sisters, seek not to understand yes. so that you can believe. Believe so that you can understand. Amen? Amen. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 3.17 Now the Lord is the Spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Amen. And when the spirit of the Lord resides and abides in us, we are called to be free. In Galatians 5.13, you, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free. And earlier in that same chapter of Galatians, it says, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm. Do not let yourselves be burdened again mm -hmm. by a yoga slave. Mm -hmm. Truth is, we only achieve real freedom mm -hmm. when we become documented legal citizens in a place called heaven. Amen. Mm -hmm. I've been blessed with the opportunity to see some of the most beautiful places in the world. Yeah. But there is nowhere in this world, on this plane, more beautiful more spectacular than this city called heaven. Amen. And let me just say, most emphatically, heaven is a real place. The Bible explicitly tells us that heaven is the dwelling place of God. Amen. His throne is there. All of the angels are there. And the Lord Jesus Christ is there. The Bible says in Philippians 3.20, our citizenship it's in heaven, amen? amen. I try to imagine what heaven might look like. Um, I see a, a river, clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God, amen? In the middle of this city, lined up on each side of that river, there will be trees of life, yielding 12 different kinds of fruit. The streets are paved with gold, as transparent as glass. The walls of this city is adorned with every kind of jewel, diamonds and rubies and emeralds and topaz and onyx. In this city of Yonder, there is no need 
for sun or moon. Mm. The glory of the Lord is its light. Amen. Amen. Albert King sang an old song. Everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. Well, <laughs> heaven, and everybody wants to go to heaven. Truth be told, heaven is a place. Heaven is just as much a place as New York or Chicago. Yes. Well, recent polls show that 80% of all Americans believe there is a place called heaven. Uh -huh. yeah. And we have an opportunity to live there forever, amen, in freedom up yonder in this place called Zion. Yeah. Fortunately for us, Jesus took citizenship on this earth. And it is through him we can become citizens in Zion. Right. Through Christ Jesus we can have eternal life in a place called heaven. There will be a multitude of people from every tribe, every language, all peoples and all nations and all tongues have an opportunity to eternal life, to become citizens in Zion. Amen. Amen. Jesus reminds us, the Bible says, Everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Uh -huh. Heaven is not just some mythical place. Some people believe that heaven is a place far, 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 far away, millions of light years away, beyond the stars, outside the known universe. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So truth is... We ain't that far from heaven, amen. Truth is, we're not that far from the angels, amen. Truth is, we're not that far from our loved ones who already inherited their eternal life in heaven, amen. Truth is, we're not that far from Jesus Christ himself. Truth is, we're not that far from the Father, amen. Truth is that heaven is a real place. It's where our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is right now. Yeah. Just, it's, just, it's just up yonder, peace. Yeah. Remember what they used to say back in back in the country? It's just up yonder, peace. Amen. And I know when I get there, as a citizen in heaven, I'm just gonna walk around heaven all day. I'm gonna walk around heaven all day, every day. Amen. One day, I'm gonna be free when I go up yonder. In Psalms 119.45, the Bible says, I will walk about in freedom because I have sought out your precepts. Amen. When I get up yonder. Amen. Amen. Citizens of Zion. And one day. 
Hey, don't know when, but going up yonder. Going up yonder. Going up yonder to be with my Lord. And you too can go. But the question is, have you accepted Jesus Christ as the Lord of your life? Is he your Lord? Is he your Savior? Huh? Do you really believe that he is? And, and it's real simple. It's real simple. It's as simple as A, B, C. Yeah. See, we acknowledge who we are. I don't know about you, but I'm nothing more than a sinner saved by grace. If it hadn't been for the grace of a loving God, oh my God, where would I be? So, A, yeah, we got to acknowledge that we're sinners. And B, we have to believe in something greater than ourselves. Something greater than the U.S. government. Something greater than the Constitution. Something greater than any man. Preacher kind of said in, 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 in his message about we don't want to be followers of men. Right. Huh? We want to be followers of the truth. Yes. And being followers of the truth, we're followers of Jesus. Yeah, we got to believe. And then confess him as Lord of our lives. If you're out there, look for a Bible believing church. In Vegas, give us a call. Most gracious God, our Father, our Lord, our Savior, our Maker, our Ruler, our Deliverer, and our King. It is in the blessed name of Jesus the Christ, our Lord and Savior, that we beseech thee. We come, God, our Father. We come, God, our Father, calling on you for we don't know nobody else to call on. Amen. And so, Heavenly Father, right now, in the midst of whatever your particular situation is, call on Jesus. He's a way maker. Call on Jesus. He's a problem answer. Call on Jesus. He's a provider. He's a protector. A lot of us, we hold on to things. We hold them and we hold them and we hold them. The Spirit of God is leading me right now. Wherever you are. And whatever it is that you're holding on to. Father, we're going to try to be 
the best that we can be. So God, our Father, we're going to lift our eyes, Lord. Oh, Lord.